I'm Al Bacon and I would like to welcome you to my Let's Fix It Right channel for easy and straightforward solutions for your home improvement, maintenance and repair needs and projects. And this is my faithful assistant Cody who will help us get this project right with his dogged determination and helpful project tips. In this episode Cody and I will show you how to use basic trigonometry to quickly and easily calculate baluster spacing on a knee wall staircase similar to mine. With engineering degrees from West Point and Texas a and I've mastered a lot of complicated mathematics. However, in this case, as a dedicated do-it-yourselfer, my objective is to make this trig episode as simple and straightforward as possible. I want all do-it-yourselfers and carpenters to clearly understand this material so they can easily compute baluster spacing on a knee wall or make similar calculations in support of other projects. If you're starting from scratch like I did and are transforming a builder's grade staircase into a finished staircase with a popular knee wall design, you should know the basic trigonometry information we're going to cover in this episode. We'll start by defining what a knee wall is, a knee wall's advantages and disadvantages compared to a standard staircase, and why knee walls are home builders choice of design today. Next we'll go through the advantages of using trigonometry, some trig definitions, and an easy to understand sample trig problem. With this background knowledge we'll capture the angle and dimensions of my knee wall, discuss the building code for 4 inch baluster spacing, the 3 and 3 quarter inch baluster spacing for my staircase which meets this code, the total number of balusters needed for my stairs, and my metal baluster setup. And my final trig calculation which took approximately one minute. Lastly, using my baluster spacing from this calculation, I'll show you the knee wall drilling pattern and wooden jig I used to test this pattern. On a staircase, the knee wall shown in the left two photos is a short wall that eliminates the huge amount of work involved with finishing the exposed edges of the stairs on a standard staircase shown on the right. Consequently, knee walls are currently home builder's solution of choice for stairwells as shown in these three display homes that my wife and I recently toured. If you have a regular staircase or non-knee wall staircase similar to this upstairs staircase in my home, this trig approach is not needed to make baluster distance calculations. You merely have to continue marking this horizontal baluster distance on the right to these exposed edges of the stair treads on the left. However, if you are preparing to mark and drill baluster holes on the top of a knee wall, this will be a major challenge which will be a very time-consuming, iterative process for determining the distance between balusters. Consequently, in this episode I'll show you how to easily and quickly make baluster spacing calculations using basic trigonometry. Most people are familiar with the Pythagorean theorem for a right triangle where the hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of its two sides squared. However, the major disadvantage of this theorem is you need to know the lengths of two sides to solve for the third one. However, per Cody's tips, if you use simple trig, you only need to measure the length of one of these three sides with your tape measure and capture one angle of the triangle with a carpenter's angle measuring tool to solve for the lengths of the other two sides of the triangle. Consequently, let's start with some basic trig concepts now. This is a standard right triangle with its 90 degree angle on the right and variable angle theta on the left. The cosine of the angle theta is the length of its adjacent or green side divided by the length of the red hypotenuse. The sine is the opposite blue side also divided by the red hypotenuse and the tangent of theta is the length of the opposite blue side divided by the adjacent green side. In other words, 
Cosine is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. Sine is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. And tangent is the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. You also see these three triangular sides expressed as X, Y, and Z as shown here. And sometimes you'll see the opposite side called the rise and the adjacent side called the run. To make this easy to understand, I always think of cosine as being an expression or ratio of horizontal distance and the sine as being an expression of vertical distance. With these reference definitions in hand, let's perform a simple calculation before moving to our staircase trig calculations. Our given requirement is if the angle theta equals 37 degrees and the horizontal side x equals 10 and 19 30 seconds of an inch, solve for the length of z or the hypotenuse. First, we'll set up our equation with respect to the cosine of the angle. So the cosine of 37 degrees equals x divided by z. Multiply both sides of the equation by z, so we have z times the cosine of 37 equals x. And divide both sides by the cosine of 37 degrees, so z equals x divided by the cosine of 37 degrees. We'll continue by substituting 10 and 19 30 seconds of an inch for x. Next, we'll look up the cosine of 37 degrees in our Let's Fix It Right trig table and determine it equals 0.799 and then enter this value into our equation. For easy calculation purposes, we'll convert the 1930 seconds to 0.594 using our Let's Fix It Right decimal conversion table and substitute it into our equation also. Next, we'll divide the 10.594 by 0.799 and achieve a value of 13.259. This is a good value, but it's difficult to accurately mark with a standard measuring tape. Looking this value up on our Let's Fix It Right conversion table, we see that 0.259 is closest to 1764. So our final answer, which can be used with our shop tape measure, is 13 and 1764 of an inch. If you want a PDF copy of my Let's Fix It Right trig table and decimal conversion tables, which I designed and built using Excel spreadsheets, go to the description below select show more and use my email address to request your copy. In most cases, I'll respond by emailing you this material in less than 24 hours. With this sample problem complete, we are now ready to determine our baluster spacing on our knee wall. This is the angle of interest on top of the knee wall that we're going to capture. Using my carpenter's angle measuring tool, I've captured the angle and transferred it to the top of my workbench. At this time, we'll measure the angle. And as you can see, this angle turns out to be 40 degrees. In our sample problem, we place theta, the angle of interest, on the left side and the y side of the triangle pointed upward. To solve for our staircase distances, I had to move the angle of interest to the right and inverted the triangle so the y side points downward. Nevertheless, even though the triangle is upside down, the sine, cosine, and tangent equations still apply. X is still the horizontal side and side Z the hypotenuse coincides with the top of the knee wall. Per Cody's tips, most residential building codes do not allow baluster spacing to exceed 4 inches or permit a 4 inch ball to pass anywhere between them. This safety requirement obviously prevents infants and toddlers from getting their heads stuck between any two balusters. 
Next, I capture the total distance x from the newel to the wall. Referencing my Let's Fix It Right decimal conversion table shows that 27 30 seconds of an inch equals 0.844 for easier calculation purposes. Or my total distance x is 52.844 inches. I selected 3 and 3 quarters of an inch baluster spacing to ensure I met the building code requirement for 4 inch spacing. And I have this laid out here with two of my balusters which are 1 half inch wide each. As I said before, we have this laid out with 3 and 3 quarters of an inch here and 3 and 3 quarters of an inch up here. Here I've dotted out the center lines of the balusters. The balusters are 1 half inch wide. Their center lines are 1 quarter of an inch to the left and 1 quarter of an inch to the right. Consequently, these 1 quarter of an inch spaces added to the 3 and 3 quarter of an inch baluster distance gives us 4 and 1 quarter of an inch distance between all of the baluster center lines on our knee wall staircase. This means that our total number of balusters will be the total horizontal width of the staircase, or 52.844 inches, divided by our 4.25 centerline distance, which equals 12.434, or 12 total balusters needed to meet code on the stairwell. With 12 balusters identified for this project, I took my wife shopping at Home Depot and she picked out this collection of balusters. As you can see, it's made up of four groups of three different balusters shown here. These 12 balusters provide for 11 equal segments of 4.25 inches with the first end baluster functioning as the edge of the first segment. 11 times 4.25 equals 46.75 inches. This subtracted from the total horizontal width of 52.844 equals 6.094 inches for the two outside edges. This means that these two outside edges are 3.047 inches long each. This is a better, easier to understand layout of these dimensions when transferred to our final product. These are our baluster distances. As discussed, our inside distance of 3.75 inches is less than our 4 inch code requirement. And as I mentioned, 4.25 inches is our centerline drilling distance for the balusters. We've also allocated 3.047 inch spaces on the outside of the 1st and 12th baluster. With all these measurements determined, we're now ready to perform our trig calculation, which determines the centerline distance between our balusters on the knee wall using the same approach that we used in our sample problem. The triangle is upside down with our 40 degree angle of interest on the right. Nonetheless, this does not affect our calculation. To start, the cosine of theta, our angle of interest, equals our centerline horizontal distance, x, divided by its incremental distance along the hypotenuse z. Multiplying both sides of the equation by z and substituting 40 degrees for theta and 4.25 for x into the equation provides this expression. Dividing both sides of the equation by the cosine of 40 degrees gives us this value for z. Looking up the cosine of 40 degrees on our let's fix it right trig table provides 0.766. and completing the division provides a value of 5.55. Lastly, looking up 0.55 in our decimal conversion table provides us 9 16 of an inch or a total of 5 and 9 16 of an inch for measuring purposes. Altogether, this calculation took approximately one minute as compared to taking an excessive amount of time to make it iterative estimates along the top of the knee wall. To assist with the layout, 
I put together this drilling pattern showing the 12 baluster locations which are 5 and 9 sixteenths of an inch apart. This calculation seems like it was too easy so let's check it out on the knee wall. To ensure that I don't ruin the top of my knee wall made with high grade pine I perform this test with a scrap piece of plywood with baluster holes drilled 5 and 9 sixteenths of an inch apart. As you can see these balusters are 3.75 inches apart which meets our code requirement so it's okay to start drilling our baluster holes at this time. Consequently my trig approach works perfectly. Lastly Cody would like to remind you of these forthcoming Let's Fix It Right episodes on cutting and installing metal balusters on a knee roll, installing a handrail over these balusters, my valuable slip fix handrail bolt lessons learned, and an overview on how to finish your stairwell with highlights starting with episode 57 on measuring and cutting stair skirts to episode 74 on the slip fix bull handrail bolt. This concludes this episode where Cody and I showed you how to use basic trigonometry to quickly and easily calculate baluster spacing on a knee wall staircase. As you can see, it's been a hard day's work for Cody.